a different topic. Since when does the vice president have what sounds like a southern accent? I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I, I mean, this is. <laughs> she was talking about unions in Detroit using uh, one tone of voice. Is this something that same you think? Same line. Okay, Peter. That she, uh, she used the same line in Pittsburgh, and it sounded like she at least had some kind of a southern I think, drawl. I mean, what? do you hear the question that you're. I mean, do you think Americans seriously think that this is an important question? They care. You know what they care about? They care about the economy, they care about lowering costs, they care about health care. That's what Americans care about. So that's what they okay, want to well, hear. This is something... They care about your colleague just asked me about democracy. Well, basically, we talked about went back and forth about democracy and freedom. That's right. what they care about. I'm not even going to entertain some question about the press. It's just it, it's just hearing it sounds so ridiculous. Well, but hearing it is the question. I'm talking about the questions is is just insane. Is that how she talks? In meetings, I, I'm just come on, Peter. We're we're moving on. We're still moving around. Fox News White House correspondent Peter Ducey gets absolutely humiliated in this clip because he asked a most ridiculous question. I mean, absolutely brain dead, mind numbingly stupid question about some accent that they believed and they accused Kamala Harris of contriving and making up. Now. This entire clip, this entire conversation is so mind-numbingly stupid. I, I think it's reflective of how just dumb American politics has become in the age of MAGA and in the age of uh, conservative right-wing echo chambers. But if I could pull a, a diamond out of this pile of feces, I, I would really want to show you that this exposes what MAGA really is. I, before I get to that, though, I want you to hear what these people think is a Southern accent from Kamala Harris. You better thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. You better thank a union member for vacation time. Because what we know. Now, if any of you are from the South like I am, you know that the, there's nothing Southern about what she just said. The only thing that Kamala Harris did in that clip was to take the word better. And instead of using a hard ER, like so many Republicans like to use at the end of words that they use, she, she put a slight AR. She didn't even put an A. Like she didn't say better. She said better. You better thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. You like it, it, it's, it's barely, it's not a Southern accent. Whatever it is, whatever it was, it most certainly was not a Southern accent. I speak with a very deep Southern accent that I work very hard at kind of, you know, trying to ameliorate because if I spoke to you the way I really speak, the way I grew up in the South, you would not understand 90% of what I say. You could not understand 90% of what I say growing up as a black man in Mississippi. You, you just, you can't. So this story has become the number one thing talked about. It is still trending on Twitter, Kamala Harris. Two days later, it's still trending about Kamala Harris's Southern accent. This is the strategy. If, if there is one, if, if there's a strategy in the stupidity here, it is an attempt to paint Kamala Harris as inauthentic and paint Kamala Harris as not authentically black more than anything else. Because one of their effective strategies has been to divide the black community, not, not completely, but a, a portion of the black community who feels like because Kamala Harris is not a uh, descendant of enslaved Africans in America, and that because she has a partial Indian heritage, that she's not authentically black. Now, never mind the fact that Kamala Harris grew up in America during desegregation and was bused from her predominantly black neighborhood to a not so black neighborhood to go to school so that they could facilitate the integration, the continued integration of school through the busing programs of the 60s. Never mind that that is like the quintessential story that every black person who was born in that era came through. Never mind that fact that the fact that she went to an HBCU 
Howard University, pledged in Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, one of the divine nine is historically black sorority. And never mind all of those things, working her way up from a, 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 a middle class environment. Fox News and conservatives want to continue to try to paint her as inauthentically black. Why do they want to do that? Because they understand the power and the significance of the black vote, especially when we as a black community coalesce around a candidate to the tune of 90 some percent. They don't stand a chance if Kamala Harris reaches nearly those numbers, along with all of the other communities that Kamala Harris is really galvanizing. The movement around Kamala is really significant because it's more diverse than any other coalition that we've seen in history. And so conservatives, MAGA, they have one strategy to attack her in the black community, to weaken her specifically amongst black men. And how do they do that? They do that by saying, oh, she's not authentically black. And so while this clip and this question and this entire period of American politics is just mind numbingly dumb, there's a strategy in the ignorance they are being intentionally obtuse because they understand that this most ignorant position and question and proposition that Kamala is not authentically black and look, Ooh, she's faking a Southern Southern accent. They really believe that that, and, and, and their polling shows that this is an effective way to alienate Kamala Harris from a small subset of the black community. And if they can pick off just enough black people to say, oh, either I don't want anything to do with her because she's not authentically black or to say I'm going to instead vote for Donald Trump, then that is their only pathway to victory. If there's anything that happened in that clip, you see Kamala Harris taking and borrowing from the black preacher tradition, the rhythmic pattern, the repetition to make a point stick. And that point stuck quite well. Whether or not you're in a union, you better thank a union. You better thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. You better thank a union member for vacation time. You better thank a union because that's why you can get full-time pay with only 40 hours a week instead of 70 hours a week. You better thank a union for any number of the benefits that you got, whether or not you were ever part of a union. That is the repetition and the pattern of the black preaching tradition that politicians have been borrowing for years. But at the end of the day, we're dealing with very ignorant times. <laughs> that are being precipitated by very intentionally ignorant and obtuse people who see a strategy in dumbing down American politics such that a ridiculous question can be asked by a White House correspondent of the White House press secretary. And the press secretary did exactly what should be done in every instance like this. Next question. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe to this channel, Really American, where we're doing our part every day to make sure that these MAGA elitists don't take over America once and for all.